In the previous lecture, we have learned about the different species of mosquitoes. Basically, they share the common life cycles. Uh, it starts with the laying of the eggs, the eggs turn into larvae, pupae, and then the pupae hatch to form adults, and the adults undergo the mating process again. We also know that the mosquitoes are attracted to human or vertebrate waste based on carbon dioxide, heat, lactic acid or any nice smells. In this lecture, we are going to investigate what can we do to control the mosquitoes. Okay, now let's look at the epidemiological model of mosquito transmitted diseases. In this model, we have infected people. We have mosquitoes that live happily under the suitable habitat, climax and with food supply. And we also have uninfected people that serve as the source of new hosts. Okay, these two group of people will get in contact with mosquitoes that serve as the vector for disease transmission. The mosquitoes are around us because we are sharing the same habitat, or we are going out during their feeding time. The general control of mosquitoes can be grouped into the control of immature mosquitoes uh, that inhabit the aquatic habitats, the control of adult mosquitoes that mostly inhabit the land areas, and the role of the government in reinforcing the public awareness, policy making, and disease surveillance. The control of immature mosquitoes involves biological control genetic control, physical control, and chemical control. Biological control of immature mosquitoes include the use of predator, parasite, or pathogens of mosquitoes. It is popular in the 20th century, but then replaced by chemical methods due to its effectiveness. The use of biological methods regained popularity due to the rise of chemical resistant mosquitoes and also the increase of environmental health awareness. Predators of mosquitoes include the use of larvivorous fish, also known as the guppy fish. These fishes consume the larvae and pupae of mosquitoes. While the other types is the use of giant mosquito larvae, which feed feed on the larvae and pupae of other species as well. The bacteria that use against mosquitoes include the bacillus species, which will infect and kill the larvae of mosquitoes. Biological control of mosquitoes can be environmental friendly, but it is more difficult to be implemented due to the underlying cost, time, and usually you are required to boost the number of the biological agent. The predators usually not targeting only mosquitoes. The strategy is not specific and the strategy usually take longer time to reduce the mosquitoes population. For genetic control, two different strategies can be employed. The first one would be the release of sterile male mosquitoes into the environment. The sterile males are produced in the laboratories using ionization method or crossbreed the male species with another related species or by introducing chemo sterilant to the male mosquitoes. These sterile male mosquitoes will compete with the fertile one in the environment. They will compete in the mating process. Hence, this will reduce the probability of a successful mating between male and female mosquitoes. Another use of genetic control would be the production of transgenic mosquitoes that could not transmit a specific disease. The release of this uh, transgenic mosquito into the environment, we hope that this characteristic will pass on to the whole population so that the disease will not be able to transmit by the same species of mosquitoes. The physical control of mosquito habitats involve mechanical and environmental means. The methods include the filling up of a tree hole or any hole with sand or stone, 
removal of stagnant water by clearing up containers and drainage of water accumulating areas such as uh, water puddles, swampy areas or tree stumps. In order to prevent the growth or to prevent the mosquitoes from laying eggs on the surface of water, you can also place a barrier such as polystyrene beads on the surface to cover up the surface. So let's say if the mosquito successfully lay the egg, the siphon uh, of the mosquito are unable to breathe as it was blocked by the polystyrene beads. Okay, these are the examples of chemical control methods for immature mosquitoes. So it includes spraying of the oil into the water surface to poison or to suffocate the larvae. We can also spray Paris green and arsenic powder, uh, also insecticides such as malathion or carbamate into the water to poison the larvae or anopheles. In case of mansonia, which is uh, inhabit certain types of uh, aquatic plants, we can destroy the plants that is there to prevent the growth of the larvae. We can also place insect growth regulator hormones to prevent the further development of larvae. Above all, integrated control through the combination of different methods has become a more feasible trend as this approach enhances the effectiveness of mosquito controls. The control of adult mosquitoes include personal protection, the use of mist and aerosol and fox, ultra low volume applications, and the use of residual house spraying. For personal protection, many approaches can be performed. We can cover the window or doors with screen. So the hole are small, the mosquito couldn't get into the house. We can also set up our bed with cover with uh, mosquito nets. And we can also spray the bedroom using mosquito spray before sleeping. We can also use mosquito coin or insecticide vaporizer containing the drugs uh, pyrethroid to produce insecticidal smoke that will kill the adult mosquitoes. Repellents can be used as well during outdoor activities like jungle tracking or hiking during the mosquito active feeding hours. Mist, aerosols and fox are usually performed in calm and non-raining weather, either in the morning or evening during the mosquito active period. The insecticides of choice include malathion and the aerosols are usually produced by motorized machine. The, the aerosols are produced in the suitable size so that it will easily attach to the mosquitoes and it can also float in the air for a longer period and reach wider areas. Ultra low volume methods involve the spraying of undiluted insecticides into the environment. This method is meant to cover wide areas and the spraying could be done by truck or aircraft carrying the insecticide tank. Residual house spraying is applied to control mosquitoes residing in the house, such as Culex and Anopheles. Okay, lastly, we look at the roles of government in controlling the vector for disease transmission, which include publicity, health education, and disease surveillance. For publicity, vector prevention message has to be delivered in multiple channels to reach different target groups. The commonly used methods include online advertisement, campaign in the endemic areas, and giving flyers. Health educations are important to bring awareness among the children and adults regarding the needs to prevent mosquito bites. It can be done in the school, science exhibition, or public areas. Regular or scheduled disease surveillance is important for the collection and monitoring of vector-borne diseases. Effective emergency plan could be performed with the data in hand. Inter-government department can cooperate together to better control a disease outbreak. A real-time and transparent reporting 
will build the awareness among public and the frontliners worker. This picture summarizes the method for control of immature and adult mosquitoes. For immature control, it involves the container treatments, either biological, physical, or chemical methods. The adult control methods could be by interrupting the process of mating, feeding, resting, and egg laying stage. That's all for today's session. Thank you for your attention.